Hi channel family, this is Dawn with Watch Women on the Wall and I wanted to see how you guys were all doing. It's been an eventful week, hearing a lot in the news and um, yesterday I basically had a direct answer to prayer but through a dream. That's happened to me a few times so I should probably get used to that. That's just the way that the Lord speaks to me a lot of the time. Um, not every time though and uh, I wanted to share this with you. I had Yesterday, I had um, poured out my heart to him, and uh, and my sister had a dream too the night before, but I really want to pray about that dream first um, before sharing it with you. I do believe it's symbolic of um, a few things, so I know that the dream she had was important, and it was from the Lord, but I just want to like kind of parse it out a little bit. But yesterday, I was on a walk. And I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but it just hit me like the exhaustion from feeling kind of alone in the world. And we're not alone um, and we're not without hope, but sometimes we feel a little isolated. And if it weren't for our channel family, if it weren't for people that we could reach out to online, um, we would feel that way. We would feel isolated. And I know a lot of us are not getting uh, anything or at least the meat of the word from our churches or they're not talking about um, they're not preparing their congregations for what to expect um, and I was just out on a walk and I was crying Literally crying to the Lord about that because I feel the same way folks. I have the same issues um, You know, I appreciate and love my church family, but sometimes If you're like me, sometimes you're just not you're not hearing to be prepared You're not hearing that um, I'm getting milk and a lot of people are getting milk or they're just not getting um, they're not getting their congregations prepared and so I was crying out to the Lord because I felt like the church as a whole universal is um, falling apart and that the church as a whole is um, exactly as it would was described it would be in the last days I'm getting attacked by mosquitoes and mayflies and everything that's okay and uh, you can read about that in 2nd Timothy and I believe it's 3 and it says, but know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. I want to stop this really quick and say that um, Paul is reminding Timothy, this isn't just um, men in the world, because this is the type of behavior you would expect in the world. Um, this is also people in the church. These are supposed to be people that um, are professing Christians. And the reason he's making that distinction here is, um, I mean, if it was just anybody in the world, this wouldn't even be a surprise. But um, because we've seen, you know, when the Spirit of God is not in you, you'll live as you please and you'll do as you please. But this is a sense of um, knowing, this is kind of like a, kind of like a marker, if you will, um, of knowing where we're at um, in the timeline of the last days. So this is behavior you're going to see more and more and more, even amongst people who call themselves Christians. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, dis disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unholy. Holiness is being set apart, by the way, being set apart for the Lord and from the, the world. When you're unholy, you're, you're, you're right there with the world. You're not set apart. You blend right in. Unloving, unforgiving slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people turn away. So here's the thing though, in uh, Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, let me go over there real quick. I wanted to, I kind of found this and thought, oh, okay, so this is not, nothing is new under the sun, but I wanted to show you that they believed even then that they were living in the last days. And they were because with God, a day is as a thousand years, and it's only been about two days since Jesus ascended to heaven. So, and, and if we're going by God's time. So, in 1 Thessalonians 1, Nine. He's talking to, Paul is talking to the Thessalonians. He's writing them and telling them about how basically the word's gone out forth from them and they've been faithful to preach the word 
and it's gone out to other areas surrounding them. And he says, for they themselves declare, the people that have been told and have been reached by these guys, sorry, I'm getting bitten, uh, concerning us, the manner of entry we had to you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. So there was never any, even then, there was always, sorry, there was always an understanding that Jesus was going to come and he was going to deliver them from the wrath to come. And we should still have that same mindset. And I wanted to remind you of that. So, so last night, so I cried out and I wanted the Lord to speak. I, I was at that point where I was just feeling like alone in the world and, you know, um, and just frustrated with mankind in general, with the church, with everything. Well, last night I had a dream and I dreamt I was in a big church that had just gotten built. I'm losing light and the mosquitoes are biting, so I'll try to be quick. I was in a big church that had just been built and I was in the sound, like the sound room in the back of the congregation. I was helping out back there and um, that's not something I normally do. And the service was getting ready to start and someone handed me like a coffee cup but in the coffee cup I knew that there was beer in it and they smiled and smirked like ha ha they're like they were getting one up on people around them and being sneaky and they thought it was funny and I was just like really it was irreverent and it was just kind of this cavalier attitude about church and about getting together and uh, why we'd come to church and then I was sitting there watching the um watching the service on the big screens like we we had like different cameras to different rooms and all of a sudden I see in one of the cameras a um piece of like it was behind the stage there was this metal up in the ceiling like you know how you can still see behind sta uh stages a lot of times you'll see like the bare bones of the building because that part didn't really get established or built well uh, or covered up well, there, there were steel, steel undergirders in the back there, and I watched as they started to bend. And I realized that the church immediately was in danger of falling apart and just collapsing. So I immediately grabbed, for some reason, my youngest daughter was with me, my husband was with me, and I knew my oldest daughter was upstairs. In the dream, I knew I literally had no time, like literally no time. I knew it was gonna collapse. And I grabbed my youngest daughter and ran I, I didn't even, I knew that we had seconds. And I started running down the hallway. And as I ran down the hallway, I got to this room at the end of the hallway, this big open glass room. And it was like a greenhouse. There were these hanging gardens hanging all over this room. And um, glass was sure enough starting to break. There were these glass panels all over this room. And uh, w there was this one glass panel that broke off to the side of the room and I threw my daughter through the frame and then I fit through it and I got out and uh, I was running down the side of the church towards the front of the church and I saw um, I panicked because I saw my husband out there I was relieved to see him but then I saw uh, what who I thought was my daughter my older daughter upstairs on the second floor and he ran to go get her he was gonna go back into this building and I knew it was gonna collapse and, but as he was running back to get her, my heart is, was pounding the whole time. I ran past his car and I realized my daughter was standing. She like, seemed like she just materialized. She was just right there next to this car. And I was like, okay, so the girl I saw up in that window looked a lot like my daughter, wasn't my daughter. And uh, so I yelled to my husband, she's right here. And so he turned around and he ran away from the building and all four of us got away from the building and it collapsed and I woke up, my heart was pounding. Well, it was given to me by the Holy Spirit that this is the church, this is the world system, this is the church uh, universal that was collapsing. You know, they were, they were happy about their brand new building, but they weren't interested in souls. And, you know, they were interested in the program in this fancy new building, but not interested in souls. They were reverent. And when I went to that room with the hanging gardens, the Lord showed me that was, 
you know, that Babylon was famous. It, it was like one of the seven wonders of the world, um, Babylon's hanging gardens. And so when I saw those hanging gardens, he showed me that was uh, the Babylon system um, that will be here when we are gone. And, uh, but it will collapse, it will collapse. Now, we were able, all four of us, to get away. Why? Because this was our escape. See, um, we're not meant to be here for the collapse of the church, the collapse of even the what we want to call the Babylonian system. And uh, after we're gone, that's being set up now, and it's been set up. And uh, so there's the beast system and the Babylonian church. The Babylonian church is what um, is just part of this the symbology of the harlot that rides the beast for a time before the beast up, kicks her off of him, basically. So she's not riding him anymore and then takes over the world. So anyway, I was shown this because the Lord, I believe, is showing us that we will be delivered and um, to not lose heart, even though you're in the world, you're not of it. And even though you are, um, it's normal, it's normal for you as a Holy Spirit um, sealed believer, if that's who I'm speaking to right now, it's normal for you to feel uncomfortable. It's normal for you to feel frustrated with the world system and the church itself, because this is not what, this is not the true church. The true church are those of us who, um, who are spirit filled, who desire to see souls saved and are watching for our, our Jesus to come. And so that was the dream I had. It was kind of an, a direct answer to prayer actually. And I want to remind you, um, as I was reading, let me get over to it because this is what usually happens when I try to read and I'm losing light, is I don't find my spot and I know where I'm going. And it's Ephesians. Give me just a second before I lose all light. I'm losing <laughs> focus fast. And you, it's Ephesians 2, starting in chat, verse 1, and you made, you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. This is to remind you, church, who you are and where you've come from, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, Satan, and the spirit, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Remember what I said in 1 Thessalonians that we would escape the wrath to come. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's positionally, but soon we will actually physically be in heavenly places with him. So that's the completion of our salvation right there. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Here is the crux of what we believe. For by grace you have been saved through faith, faith in what? In Jesus, the blood of Jesus, that not, that not of yourselves. It's not of yourselves, not of your own works. It is the gift of God. This is a gift, this grace. Not of works lest anyone should boast. Amen? That is the gospel right there. The gospel of Jesus Christ. You could also read about it in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Romans 10, 9 through 10, and 13. I, I know I've quoted those so many times before. I love you all. Just stay encouraged, church. The true church is going home. And going home soon. Love you all. Mary Natha. Hi, gentle family. As I often do, I rewatch my videos, and what I wanted to say as an addendum to this video is that I failed to use the word apostasy. Uh, the church collapsing in my dream, that was the apostasy of the church. That is what is happening now. But we will not be here to see the full apostasy. After we are gone, it will get a lot worse. The amount of people who turn away will, uh, obviously, they'll you know, the apostasies, the apostasy is happening now, of course, but uh, the amount of people who will be deceived by the Antichrist will be huge, but, but there will be a humongous amount of people who realize what just took place. Be encouraged because keep praying for those you love, those you know, who do not know the Lord, because if they're out there and they haven't, 
when the rapture happens. Pray that they would not be fall into that deception. They'll be able to see the rapture for what it was and uh, put two and two together. Leave scripture verses around. Keep telling them. Keep putting it out there on Facebook and everywhere you can. Know that the Lord, he loves them. And, uh, you know, he loves them more than you do. So I want to encourage you because in the book of Revelation, it talks about a great um, number who washed their, they washed their own robes in the blood of the Lamb. But there was a great number, a vast number of people. So I just want to encourage you in that. Have a good night.